In two separate maths casts, I have proved the product rule and the quotient rule using first principles differentiation. Here, we're going to look at the chain rule. Unlike the cases of the product rule and the quotient rule, though, here I need to do a little bit of preliminary work to prove a result that I will need during the course of the proof of the chain rule itself. Let's get that piece of preliminary work out of the way immediately. I'm going to write down the first principles differentiation rule for a function y of x. Here it is. To get the actual derivative of y, we have to assume the limit as the run goes to zero for the rise over the run. That's all very familiar. But what about if the run is not quite zero? Suppose h is still very small but not quite zero. In that case, we could only say that the derivative is approximately equal to the expression inside the limit. We could write it that way. Clearly, if h actually tends to zero, then we have to take the limit and we get the derivative. If h is not quite zero, then the expression on the right is very close to being the same as the derivative, but is not exactly the derivative. I've done this for a special reason. I want to rearrange this expression and make y of x plus h the subject. We can do that by cross-multiplying the h up, or if you prefer to think of it that way, multiplying through by h. Then we can make y of x plus h the subject by taking the y of x to the other side. This is called the small difference formula. And for h very small, the right-hand side is very close indeed to being the same as the left-hand side. It says that if you have y of x evaluated at two points that are very close together, that is, at x and x plus h, then y of x plus h is obtained from y of x by adding the small quantity h multiplied by the derivative of y. The error in this formula is of order at least the square of h, and of course the squares of small quantities are much smaller than the original quantities themselves. Anyway, this is the formula I want to use later on. Let's now start to look at the chain rule from a first principles perspective. I hope you remember that the chain rule is the rule we have to use when the function we're differentiating is a composite function. Here I've written that as f of the function g of x. Let's put this straight into a first principles formula for the derivative of y. There it is. It's just a rise over a run as usual, but this time we have x plus h inside the function g and also x inside the function g and f is applied to both of those. This time, unlike in the product and quotient rule, we're not going to add and subtract some term. Instead, we're going to use the small difference formula that we've just derived above. Bearing in mind that we are going to actually take the limit h goes to zero, the small difference formula can in fact be regarded as exact now and not just an approximation. Let's apply it to the function g of x plus h. It's just a matter of changing the y's in the red formula above to g's everywhere, but also maintaining the fact that that g of x plus h is an, an internal function inside the f. Here's the result. The only difference is that in that first f, instead of g of x plus h, it's been replaced with g of x plus h times g prime of x. Now, let's think about the function f in that first term. It's f of g plus something, and the something, h g primed, is small, because h is small. That means that we could apply the small difference formula again, but this time applying it to f, and our small quantity would now be h times g primed of x. Let's do that. The small difference formula says we will get f of the first argument, that's g of x, then plus the small quantity, that's h times g primed, and this time multiplied by the derivative of f at the original position, which is g of x. So we want f primed of g of x. That's dealt with the first term, and then we just have to subtract the f of g of x and put everything over h as usual. And that is rather nice, because can you see f of g of x minus f of g of x the first and last term will cancel each other. 
and even better, with those two terms gone, the H's now cancel as well. What's left is just the term g primed of x times f primed of g of x. That doesn't depend on h at all. Any h dependence that might have been there would have been higher order terms with h squared and so on in, so it would disappear anyway when we take the limit. Taking the limit means that all we need is to write out that term again. Usually, conventionally, we do it in the opposite order, so we write the f primed of g first. And that is the chain rule. Let's write it out. Remember we started with the function y equals f of g of x and for that function we have now shown that the derivative dy dx is equal to the product f primed of g times g primed. If you prefer your chain rule expressed with an intermediate function u then it's just a matter of identifying the function g as the u. So we now have df by du, the derivative of f, with respect to the thing inside it, which is now called u, and then the g is u, and so g primed is du dx. That's the result I wanted to prove, so I'm going to stop there.